About six months ago, I bought this LiDAR sensor. This was meant to be the primary source of obstacle avoidance, or kind of navigation for the robotic platform I've been building up. The aim was this would scan side to side looking for obstacles and kind of um, navigating around them. It's uh, like with most things I think I do, it's been sat on the shelf for most of that time. But in the last week or so, I finally had an opportunity to try and build a rig to get it to move back and forth. The sensor I opted for is the Garmin LiDAR Lite version 3. This was released towards the end of last year and it's got a range of kind of 0 to 40 metres and it's pretty accurate across in the entirety of that range unlike a lot of other types of sensor. The problem with this sensor or the type of sensor is that its um, focusing point is very very narrow so it does, the beam is kind of a laser beam that comes out, it doesn't diverge too much, so it will give you an accurate distance to a particular point. So for my use case, I need to get it to move side to side, at least side to side anyway, to get an accurate kind of picture of what's in front of the robot. There are a lot of different ways to get a sensor like this to move around. I experimented with a few different options, kind of servos, brushless motors, but the, the method I went for, um, at least for this version, was a stepper motor. I'm only interested in obstacles in front of the rover, so I really only need kind of a side-to-side -side motion, probably even less than 180 degrees. But in the interest of building something a little bit more interesting and more useful, I kind of decided on going for a full 360 degree rotation. And unless I'm going to scan back and forth, I need to deal with the cable somehow. So six pins that come out of here, they're going to get tangled if this thing is going to rotate. So I was able to locate a, um, like a six channel slip ring. Now this has got uh, six wires coming out, it's in and six wires out. And inside the body will be kind of six kind of prongs rubbing against the inner pole, which means this can rotate as much as you want and it retains an electrical connection to what's coming beneath. I've worked on and with a lot of different things over the years, but one thing I've had very little contact with are gears. But for this case, uh, this is kind of the only real way to do it, or the easiest way to do it. So I kind of got the 3D printer up and running again, and I've been working on a variety of um, different parts to kind of get this thing functioning. At the heart of it are these two gears here. Uh, this gear fits on top of the motor, and this gear kind of fits into the shaft under here, so that kind of locks in nice and tight. And so that allows the two to rotate. To hold these two gears together, I've got this uh, mounted plate here. This will join together the motor, along with the kind of rotating piece here. I'll feed that through. And that keeps everything aligned. The two gears then fit on top of each other. Now, the motor just kind of screws onto the offsets, 3D printed onto the base of this thing. This thing um, I haven't fully solved yet, but it's three mounting holes. So what I've got are three kind of 3D printed lugs, which this thing kind of perfectly fits into. I need to work out a better way to secure that, um, but for now I'm just blue tacking that in with the aim that it could potentially be glued in in the future. One of the benefits of using a servo is that you always know what position it's in. It's got feedback and electronics built inside so that if you say kind of go to the center point it will always return to that same center point. And with a stepper motor you've kind of got to do that yourself which is what this little reflectance sensor is in there. That's just emitting a light and looking for the intensity of the reflected light that comes back. And so to handle that I've got a little white patch of paint on there that's uh, that's then on need full rotation, it knows where it is. The problem that I was then left with was how do I mount this onto here? Gluing is definitely an option, but not really one I wanted to pursue. So that in mind, I built made this piece here. This um, fits onto the top, but it's got um, two mounting slots which make use of the mounting brackets here. That forms a tight friction fit in there and that slips flat against the bed. This can be glued again if necessary, but at the moment it certainly hasn't been, and that forms a pretty tight connection. This piece here then slots down over the top. 
It's got a couple of cutouts in it for cable management, so the wire kind of feeds through the middle, out the side, and back through the top. There. And with everything kind of uh, connected up and plugged in, this is what it looks like. So the motor spins and the sensor spins. So these are the electronics I've got running it. Again, this is just held kind of in experimentation mode, but I've got a Teensy uh, 3.6 here. This is most definitely overkill at the moment, but it's what I had to hand. And a Palulu stepper motor driver. That takes care of kind of driving various different coils, just given a step and direction signal. Makes it really easy to work with. The LiDAR sensor then has uh, kind of six connections back to the board, uh, two data, two kind of control type signals and two power signals. And so that then works quite nicely. I'm going to power it up now and you can see how it operates. So hopefully that's picked up the sound, but it is uh, rather noisy, uh, much more noisier than I had hoped for. And I think that is in part because of the 3D printed gears meshing together, but it, it does function. Now what it's doing as it starts up is it does a full rotation, or as much of a rotation as it needs in order to sensor it, then it kind of keeps on scanning. It does a full pass of collecting readings, loops back around, does a full pass and back around. Um, there's a lot more optimizations of work that needs to be done here, but until I've decided if this is the method I want to stick with, that's as far as I got with that. So at the moment this thing works, it works reasonably well. I think I can certainly optimise what I've got a little bit more, but I think there are some, certainly some fundamental problems which might not be possible to solve, namely the sound, the noise it makes. And so with that in mind, I am kind of keeping my options open in terms of other ways to drive this or to control it, possibly going back to looking at a, a, just a regular servo motor, even though that may be a little bit boring. Um, but for now, this is certainly how it stands. Thank <laughs> you.